<clears throat> the title of my uh, broadcast is uh, Jesus Blocked Trolls. And the reason that I'm doing this is because uh, I see the ministry of trolls um, on Periscope. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, um, I tune into someone's broadcast to hear something interesting. And then a lot of the time is spent, um, uh, the broadcaster spends dealing with trolls. Uh, trolls distracting them and uh, the broadcaster entertaining them. And uh, yesterday I asked a broadcaster, you know, why don't you block them? And uh, he said, well, no, you know, in a way, um, Jesus wouldn't have blocked them, right? And so I thought about that. And I said, well, you know, it, it, that's kind of not true. There's an example in, in the scriptures of uh, Jesus blocking trolls. And... Uh, you may say, well, how could that be? There weren't any trolls in Jesus' time. Uh, there wasn't any periscope in Jesus' time. And, and I would say to you, you're right about that. There was no periscope in Jesus' time. But there were detractors. There were uh, non-believers that were disorderly, <clears throat> that were mockers, that were scoffers and scorners, detractors. And isn't that the definition of a troll? A troll gets in your broadcast and, um, first of all, he's disorderly. He, he wants to disrupt the order of your broadcast. Starts cursing, making sexual innuendos, asking questions off topic. Um, you know, uh, one individual um, was telling me um, that, um, you know, I'm talking about one topic. He comes in and, you know, a whole sentence, uh, a different topic. <clears throat> and it is like what I'm supposed to do is uh, get off my subject, the purpose of my broadcast, and start dealing with his distraction. So basically what I'm saying is that a troll is an individual that is opposed to your purpose and comes into your um, time and your space and your effort to disrupt you, to take you away from um, your purpose. And so certainly there were those types of individuals in Jesus' time. And uh, I am going to uh, read you a scripture that shows you how Jesus dealt with it, dealt with trolls. And so it's, um, it's a uh, Mark uh, 5, 35 uh, through 43. I'm just going to read it really quickly. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him, and then this is what Jesus did. This is the first cut. This is the first separation of trolls uh, uh, out of the way. Jesus did not let anyone follow him except for Peter James and John. So Jesus was in the synagogue teaching. Uh, and then he decided that he was uh, uh, going to undertake 
a um, purpose. And the first thing that he did is he separated out potential trolls. First of all, the whole gang of uh, people in the synagogue, he said, no, you can't come with me. I'm going to go down there to Jairus' house, and uh, I want to uh, see about this little girl who died. Uh, you all can't come. And so he has 12 disciples. He told nine of them, and you all can't come either. Uh, he's uh, already separated a, a level uh, of uh, trolls, spirits. Uh, the, the inclination of people. Nine of the, his disciples, he didn't want them to come. It's like, no, you guys stay. Peter. James, John, come on. I'm going to need you guys. So Jesus did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? I'm reading the NIV. The child is not dead, but sleep. And here comes the next level of trolls. The people that were there laughed at Jesus. They mocked him. They laughed at him. They scorned him. They became disorderly. Jesus is serious. He's saying something for a purpose. And they laugh. I'm sorry, sir. Let me just let me just continue with with what, what I'm saying. I, I guess I can answer your question in a moment. But um, the uh, they went on to be disruptive and disorderly, and so uh, they laughed at him. Uh, one version, uh, I think the uh, King James said, "To scorn." They laughed him to scorn. Now, what did Jesus do? Did Jesus engage them and say, now why are you all laughing? I'm telling you, I got the power to resurrect the little girl. Jesus did not do that. What did he do? He put them out. He says, well, he looked over the crowd. He said, let me just see who's laughing. He says, oh, they're all laughing. Uh, uh, out. He put them all out. He blocked them so that they cannot uh, distract him and be disruptive. I mean, this story was so important that Jesus wasn't going to spend any time dealing with detractors. He put them all out. He didn't put a couple of them out just to show the others what's up. He put them all out. All out. Lock the door. Put them all out. After Jesus did that, um, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in uh, where the child was. Uh, he took her by the hand and said to her, Tahitha kaum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the little girl stood up and walked around. She was 12 years old. At this, now, now, after he raised the little girl, he brought them back to the gang of trolls. Uh, at this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this. I don't understand why. And told them to give her something to eat. Jesus is uh, with all his disciples in a crowd. And then he purposes to do something. And the first thing that he did is he's going to winnow out the distracting spirits. He's going to winnow out the trolls. He did not let anyone follow him from the original crowd. He didn't let most of his disciples follow him. And then when he got to the house, he threw the crowd out. Why did he do this? Well, he did this because mockers and uh, scorners and detractors have no place in the kingdom. 
In fact, in uh, the story of the children of Israel in the desert, God did not allow them uh, the mockers and detractors and the murmurers and the complainers. He did not allow them to enter the promised land, to contaminate the promised land. He blocked them from the promised land. And so uh, comes the question, why are you a broadcaster allowing trolls to detract you, to take away your focus and to whittle away your time and to, and to make you lose your train of thought by asking silly questions, by asking questions that appear to be on topic, but they're really not because they're distracting you from your train of thought. Why are you allowing this to happen? What would Jesus do? Jesus would block them. Because the work that he did, his purpose was too important to allow a crowd, a gang of mockers and scorners and disorderly individuals to detract them, to uh, destroy his purpose. And so if you're really, if you're serious about your purpose in broadcasting, you're serious about delivering a message, you're serious about saying something that you believe is important to the body of Christ, uh, don't feel badly about blocking uh Trolls, block them. If someone's asking you a question that appears to be on topic, but you feel it in your heart that this is a distracting spirit, block them. Don't spend another moment. They have no place in the kingdom. Block them immediately. Now, I, I want to make this clear. Not all unbelievers are uh, trolls. Not all unbelievers or people that disagree with you are trolls. Not all of them. Um, you know, after all, um, sometimes we speak to uh, the children of the kingdom and sometimes we speak to unbelievers. Uh, there's a place for speaking to unbelievers and engaging unbelievers and uh, discussing uh, and reasoning with unbelievers. There's a place for that. And so you have to make a distinction between unbelievers and trolls. Unbelievers are, are people that are curious, that are sincere, that, um, that, don't, that lack knowledge of what you're talking about. But here's the thing. They are orderly. They are not mockers. They are not scorners. They are orderly and uh, they are respectful of your purpose, of your time. And they, their purpose is not to defeat your purpose. So there's a big difference. And so you have to uh, discern who is a scorner, who is a detractor, who is a troll, and who is merely an unbeliever that can be reached with uh, your uh, message. And so I'm not saying block everybody that doesn't believe in what you're saying, block everybody that doesn't agree with what you're saying. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying discern between a troll and everyone else, and block trolls right away. Now, one more scripture. Uh, trolls um, ridicule your beliefs. 
non-believers don't necessarily ridicule your beliefs. And they attempt to stop you from your purpose. Unbelievers don't necessarily do that. Uh, <clears throat> there's one more scripture that I like to present to you uh, as an example of how God deals with, uh, uh, Jesus dealt with mockers and scorners and detractors and trolls in our parlance. Uh, that's Luke 9 and 5. Jesus instructed his disciples to block trolls. He instructed them to have nothing to do with them. Don't entertain them. Don't talk to them. You know, it's, it's like ultimately trolls represent, if you represent the purposes of God, then what do trolls represent? If they do not represent purposes of God, they represent the purposes of the enemy. If they're not for you, they are against you. And so, you know, uh, we're not instructed to engage the enemy in conversation, in, this, in detract, distracting conversations. We are instructed to do the following. This is what Jesus told uh, his disciples in Luke 9 and 5. That if they go somewhere to preach the gospel... And the people of the town merely fail to receive them, merely fail to welcome them. They don't have to, to be out and out distracting or, 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 or impolite or disruptive or disorderly just merely fail to welcome you, fail to receive you. This is what Jesus said to the disciples to do. If people do not welcome you, if they do not welcome you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave their town as a testimony against them. Have absolutely nothing to do with them have absolutely nothing to do with them. Even the dust in the town is uh, to be removed from you. The dust in the town, the, the dust that they stepped on, don't bring it out of the town, leave it there. It's a testimony against them. So, I urge broadcasters that are serious about delivering a message uh, serious about their purpose not to entertain trolls not to entertain them in fact block them you know the uh, founding fathers of Periscope were wise in their ways to give you the power to block individuals that are disruptive. And so I want to thank everyone who checked in uh, and uh, zero number of you that hung in there until now. And I just want uh, to let you guys know that doesn't matter to me how many people come into my broadcast. Really doesn't matter to me because uh, my purpose is just to speak it out. And um, it is not my purpose to gather an audience around me. And so that was the purpose of my broadcast. Thank you very much. Keep on broadcasting. Keep on um, expressing the 
revelation that God places in your heart and your spirit so that we could all be blessed by it. Thank you. Until next time. Here we go.